Hello everyone, this is Nazmul Hassan and I'm going to give you a brief introduction of Microsoft Studio 2010 in this video. You'll find this window after you have launched the software. The software consists of 8 modules. Each of them is focusing on a particular field and Microsoft Studio is one of the modules. It deals primarily with high frequency systems and circuits. This video is all about Microsoft Studio. So select this module and press OK to launch Microsoft Studio. This window contains some built-in templates, but we don't need them right now. So close this window. This is the graphical user interface of Microsoft Studio and the window is divided into several parts. At the top of the window, we, we have got a series of menus. Then we have got toolbars. And on the left side, we have got navigation tree, which contains project data and simulation results. And this place is called the working space. And the rectangular grid is called the working plane. Let me tell you one important thing, Microsoft Studio requires intense use of code in the system. In fact, the working space contains a three-dimensional rectangular code in the system, and the accuracy of the dimensions of the objects will vastly depend on how expertly you use the code in the system. So please remember this point in your mind. Let us now navigate the menus. First of all, we have got File menu, and we can create new project and save the project from here. We can also import files from other software like HFSS. Also, we can export files to other software from here. Next, we have got Edit menu. We can change the working plane properties from here. Right now, the size is 10, but we can change it, give a new size of 100. and the width corresponds to the squares of the grid. Let's give it 5. The working plane has been resized. Sometimes the object size is bigger than the working plane. Then we can resize this working plane according to the size of the object. The edit menu also contains another sp special tool called history list. History list contains all previous actions done. And from here, we can easily restore any previous point or delete them. Next, we have got View menu. And it allows us to see the windows we want, like Navigation Tree, Parameter List, Message Window, or Workspace. We've also got some zooming tools here. Next, we have got WCS menu, and this menu is all about coordinate system. Microsoft Studio has got two coordinate systems. One is called global, and another is called local. XYZ is the local, uh, sorry, global coordinate system, and EVW is the local coordinate system. And there is an advantage of using local coordinate system because we can move, we can rotate, or we can align the local coordinate system. But these operations are not possible for global coordinate system and the advantage of using local coordinate system will become clear to you once you start to build objects in Microsoft Studio. All the operations I have mentioned are available under this menu. Next we have got Chaos menu and Microsoft Studio has both 2D and 3D objects and CAPS are two-dimensional objects. Right now they are disabled but once you create a new curve they will become active. Now they are active. And then we have got objects menu. It contains some widely used functions like pick point, pick face, and so on. 
they are widely used during the time of creation of objects. And also it contains 3D objects like brick, sphere, cylinder and so on. We can construct complex geometries by the combination of these fundamental building blocks. And the rest of the menus are related to simulation. We can run the simulation from the solve menu. But before running the simulation, some certain steps must be completed. And the results of the simulation can be accessed from results menu. That was a very brief introduction to the menus and I hope it was useful for the beginners. And I tried to be concise as much as possible because I didn't want to overburden you at the very beginning. Thank you for watching this video.